Hello, and welcome back to our study of Penine Halacha, the teachings of Rabbi Yazar Malamed Shlita. We continue along with the laws of Tzedakah, and the next chapter is Chiyuv Ma'aser Ksafim. Mitzvah min amuvcha laseis chamishis meharachim le tzedakah. Umida beinonis laseis maser men ravachim, vahanoisin pachos mekaimis mitzvah tzedakah kimidas ein ra'ah. So we have to give a certain percentage of our earnings to tzedakah, and the ultimate fulfillment of the mitzvah, the better performance of the mitzvah, is to give a fifth, but the middle, the middle road is to give a tenth of our profits to tzedakah, and if a person gives less, then we're saying that the person fulfills the mitzvah of tzedakah with an evil eye. So here's the question. Is it an obligation to give what we call maser? We use this term maser. I'll just use that throughout. Maser is a tenth. Is one required to give maser from his earnings? And if so, what is the source? Here's the answer. According to a minority of the opinions, this is a Torah obligation. And some hold that this is only a rabbinic obligation. And a third opinion is that this is only a custom and it's not a Torah or even a rabbinic obligation. But we have to point out the following. Even if you say that giving Meiser is only a custom, doesn't mean that if a person gives a tenth of his earnings that you're fulfilling it. It's not even a big, an important mitzvah that's only based in a minhag, only based on a custom. Because it's clear that the main part of giving tzedakah certainly is a Torah obligation because the Pasuk says, as we've said many times in Re'eh, that when it's possible and when you have the ability to, you have to fill in the earnings for a poor person, fill in de machsaro according to what he is missing. But generally speaking, the needs of those who are indigent are great. And we don't have the possibility, we don't have the ability to support them all. Therefore, the Torah law and rabbinic law, they established a halacha, which means that we have to sort of take a middle path, which is, okay, I'll give a tenth. I can't support everyone. I can't take care of every poor person. So therefore, I will have a midah of giving a tenth of my earnings. So therefore, the notion of giving a tenth of your earnings is the way that Chazal have categorized for us how to fulfill the mitzvah of the Torah in a average, decent fashion. It's not extreme either way. Kolomar. Even though there are those that say that giving a tenth is only a custom, that custom is coming to expound and explain how to fulfill the mitzvah of the Torah. And if a person does not fulfill the meaning of giving a tenth, you haven't fulfilled even according to the average path, but rather the evil path, Ayin Ra'ah. Nevertheless, we have a certain halachic sense about the essence of this question of whether I have to give a tenth of my earnings. And this is always a question that someone who does not have a lot of money, let's say someone himself is suffering and has trouble getting by. If you say that it's a Torah obligation, so even when you're in dire straits, that means you have to give a tenth of your already struggling earnings to someone who's even more indigent than you or perhaps to an institution to support Torah learning. However, if you say that is rabbinic in nature, Therefore, 
therefore someone who cannot afford to give a tenth of his earnings. If it's only rabbinic in nature, he will suffice with just giving a little bit to someone who is even in more difficult position than he. But if you're only slightly troubled, then you still have to give a tenth. And if you say that it is only a custom, even someone who has only a slight amount of trouble is exempt from giving miser. And therefore, the minig would only fall on someone who can get by with ease and also afford to give a tenth of his earnings. So we see here this sort of halachic discourse on this very question of whether giving miser is Torah obligation, rabbinic obligation, or a custom, and here we see the nafkamina, we see the difference between these opinions. In any event, a widely accepted custom, certainly in our circles, and Baruch Hashem, we live in an affluent society where we can afford to give tzedakah, but we meticulously give a tenth of our earnings, at least, certainly to people, to causes, and there's never a shortage of causes, never a shortage of people who are asking for our assistance, and therefore, if we're in a position that we can help, then most certainly we should because tzedakah is a hallmark, trademark of our people that we help those who have less than we have. And it's also, I'll point out, that tzedakah is a learned behavior, something you have to teach your children from a very young age. It's not easy. You can have so much and it's very hard to take a dollar out of your pocket. But if you train yourself from a very early age that you have to give to others, then this is something hopefully that will follow you the rest of your life, and you'll lead by example. So, hope everyone has a great day. Thank you so much for joining us. And Emir Tzashem, we'll see you here next time as we continue studying Penine Halacha, the teachings of Rabbi Yazim Alameh, Shlita.